Now, many of you probably already know I'm a big fan of admin columns, the free version and the pro version. I've covered them in various different video tutorials to show you how you can really expand what you can do with your admin accounts. We've also taken a look at some advanced features in the pro version with a series of sponsored videos. This is the third and final in that sponsored series. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the key new features that have recently been added to expand what you can do with advanced custom fields and also what you can do with media inside your media library, somewhere we already know is pretty and loved by WordPress. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you the kinds of things we can do, and then I'll show you how you can go out creating something like this for yourself. So this is an example of a typical media library, specifically showing videos. And you'll see straight away, we've got a couple of extra features inside you that you don't have as part of WordPress normally. You can see we've got the video, which we can go ahead and take a look at. We can play a preview window of this if we want to. We can download the video directly from inside you. We can do various different things. We can inline edit. We can find out all manner of information about the media itself, the resolution, file size, file format, all those kinds of things. We can also go ahead and switch this over to other media types. For example, we may want to take a look at audio. If we switch that over, you can see again, we've got a series of information, including an ability to play this directly inside the actual media library itself. So just something like this will speed up the whole process. Perfect if you're working with things like podcasts, those kinds of things. And as you can see, we've got a lot of information, the bitrate, channel mode, compression, format, sample rate, tons and tons of information. We can even go ahead and download it directly from inside you. We've also got things like inline editing, bulk editing, and all manner of other things that we can do as part of admin columns as standard. So how do we go about creating something like this? Before we go and take a look though, let me just say that if you want to test this out for yourself, I'll put a link in the description below where you can try out a sandbox mode and you can see exactly what I've got here and you can take this for a test. You can see how everything works. Try it out for yourself to see exactly how it all works before you hop on board and take a look at doing this for yourself. Okay, so that's what we're going to create. Let's go and take a look at how we get started creating something similar. Let's hop over into our media library. Let's open that up and see what we're working with. You can see we've got some video uploaded, we've got some audio uploaded alongside your normal media images, those kinds of things. And we can see some basic info. So let's go ahead and say we want to start to customize various different aspects of this. When you've got Admin Columns or Admin Columns Pro installed, you'll see you get this new option, which is the Edit Columns. We can click to go in and we'll now open up the specific section we're looking at. In this example, the Media Library. So once we're inside the Media section, you can see we've got all those columns enabled and we just got the basic standard setup. Certain things, probably no use to most people. So we can easily go and get rid of all of those. We also can go ahead and add other things in. We can also customize who can see the various different parts of this, toggle specific options that allow us to do things like inline editing, bulk editing, and so on. We can set up horizontal scrolling, default sorting, and also pre-applied filters. Well, pre-applied filters are incredibly useful. They allow you to very easily create groupings of different types of media in this example. So things like your video, your audio, just makes it whole process easy. And I'll show you how to create those in a moment. So let's take a look. First of all, we've got all these different columns. Let's say we don't want the comments column because it's totally irrelevant. We can click on remove. That's now gone. So taking things away, super, super easy. We can also go ahead and click on add column. Inside there, now we can choose the type of column we want to add. You can see actions is set by default, but we can easily come in and we've got a lot of options inside here. We've got things like the file author uploaded to comments and date, which is pretty much all standard options. We can include custom fields if we're using things like advanced custom fields. We can also go ahead and input image information, video information, audio information. We've also got custom actions. There's a ton of things. I would recommend checking out the other videos in this series to give you more details in how to do a lot of these different things with normal kinds of content. However, let's go ahead and say we want to include something like a media player so people can see exactly what's going on. So for this example, we're going to say we're going to use the media player because we're going to use this for video. We'll select media player and now we can go ahead and we can change the label on here. We can drop an image in if we want to adjust the spacing, the size and so on. We can choose whether to embed or have a pop up. So for this example, let's choose a pop up. So it'll open up its own dedicated window. OK, so now we've created something a little bit more unique. Let's save this. Let's go back and take a look. 
and you can see there's our video player and you can see it only shows up now for any of the files that are video so if we click on play on this one it'll open up that little pop-up and we can go ahead edit download go to the next media on the next media pretty cool so now we can see how we can have this play button but it doesn't make a lot of sense when it's only being displayed for video and everything else is kind of just showing this empty little space so how can we deal with that it's very very easy we're going to do two things we're going to create a custom filter and we're going to create a custom media set so what we're going to do is we're going to hop back over into our edit columns we're going to create a column set first of all we'll click on add we're just going to call this video we're going to leave copy current settings because that's going to pick up all the settings we can see that are open on screen in front of us right now we we'll click on add and now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and view that so let's click on view and everything looks exactly the same because we haven't changed anything other than create a media set so what we need to do now is go ahead and create a filter and then we can apply that to the media set so what we're going to do is we're going to change this from all media items to video and click on filter so that's now going to filter our entire media library and only display anything that matches the video format now we can go ahead and click on the little arrow to the right hand side of add filter and we're going to click on save filters now what we need to do is give this a name we'll call this video and we need to make sure this is made available for all users this means that we can then use that query that filter inside our media set let's click on save and we've now created our own custom filter so what we need to do now is go back in and edit our columns one more time and now if we scroll to the bottom you can see it says pre-applied filters default in other words no pre-applied filters will still show everything we can drop down that list and choose video from there now what we need to do is click on update and now when we go back and view this you can see we have a new section at the top this is the smart switch this allows us to switch views at the moment we've got video but we can switch this back to media and this will show everything all the media if we switch it back to video it will now only show the video now you may be thinking well the play button's still there on all of them and that's because we haven't created any other media sets so let's just go back out of this let's hop back into the media option which is all of our media so click on that and let's remove that video player let's just delete it completely we'll remove that from there and we'll click on update so now we have two sets with different types of fields available so one more time let's go back and view this you can see now if we take a look at media that play button is no longer available but if we switch over into video there's our play button we can click on it and it will now play the video back in our little pop-up window so these media sets alongside filters allow you to create your own way of very quickly filtering and also applying the relevant columns and information you want to specific media types so let's do this one more time now and create something for our audio where we've got an inline media player for the audio let's click on the edit columns option come over to our column sets and we're going to add a new column set we'll check that option i'm going to call this audio we're going to uncheck the option for copy current settings just so we start off with basically nothing click on add and we've now created our audio set and you can see everything has been reset to the default values for that particular media type so again we can remove the comments this time we're going to add a new column we're going to choose the option for audio player we'll minimize that we'll add another column I'm going to come down and we're going to choose the option for audio meta and again you can see we can choose what we want so we've got things like bit rate bitmate road compression ratio all those different options so we can create as many of these as we want so let's go ahead and do that for a couple of these we'll set bit rate inside there we'll just go ahead we'll clone that for speed and we'll change that from audio meta and we'll change the bit rate and we're going to say channels and we'll do one more cloning that and this time we're going to change this over to the option for file format we'll save this and now we've created a variant on our original set so what we need to do now is go ahead back into this to view it we're going to filter this out again so this time we're going to come to all media items and we're going to go for audio and filter drop this option down save our filter and we're just going to call this audio make available for all users and click on save so now that we've created that 
filter, we just need to quickly go in and apply that now to our set. So let's go back into edit columns, scroll to the bottom, change our pre-applied filters from default and set that to be audio. We'll simply come up, click on update, and now we can go ahead, view things, and you can see audio now is showing us just the audio with our media player, our meta information. Everything is set up inside there. We can switch over this time to video. You can see that now is showing us the video set. And if we go over to media to show everything, you can see that now gives us the normal default layout. So you can really get creative with this to create a much more powerful, feature-rich media library using Admin Columns Pro. There's so many different options you can use inside you. It's absolutely mind-blowing what you could do with this to create pretty much the ultimate media library in WordPress. Very, very easy using the options I've just shown you. Okay, so now that we've seen how we can go about customizing the columns, adding a lot more functionality into our media library, there's so much more we can still do to this to make this even more powerful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the ability to do things like inline editing, exporting, those kinds of things. So let me show you how easy it is to do that. And again, we can apply this based upon the individual different sets we've got set up. So let's go back and choose to edit columns. We're looking at the audio options at the moment. And as you can see, if we take a look at the different columns that are available, we've got a range of different icons. Some of these are gray, in other words, they're not enabled. Some of them are blue, which means they are enabled, but they can be overridden based upon these toggle elements underneath. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and enable various different ones, and then we're gonna switch the different settings to the way we want. So we wanna say this first option is to allow us to export this information. So we say the file, the author, we won't in include the audio player, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but we'll include everything else. So if we exported this information, all this would be exported as part of our database dump. We can do the same then for the inline editing, so we can select those options to enable that for these relevant columns. And if we want to, we've got things like smart filtering, ordinary filtering, and so on. So we're gonna leave those set as they are. Now, if we come down to the toggle elements, you can see we can enable or disable any of these features. So you may have, for example, you don't want to have bulk actions available or you may not want search, you may want to completely disable the export option. We can simply turn those on and off from here. So for now, let's just disable the export just to see how this works. We'll enable that option and we'll just click on update. Now let's go back and take a look. So everything looks pretty much the same, except you'll see we've got additional options at the top. We've got bulk actions, which we can now go ahead and use, and we've also got inline editing. If we enable that, you'll see when we hover over any of the columns that are editable, we can simply come in, click on the little pencil icon and make changes directly inside there. So again, you can see we've got the author, we can click and change the author, we can change the file, anything we've got enabled is available to us there. We've also got the option to adjust the size of these simply by grabbing the draw handle in between and adjusting the column width, really, really easy. So let's just say we wanted to enable that export option. Let's just go back into our columns. Let's come down and let's just re-enable that option. So now we've globally enabled that on this particular column set. Let's update one more time. Come back and click on view. And you can see now we have the option to export. So we can choose to export a CSV and you can see that now downloads an a CSV file. So that's really, really easy and a great way of being able to export your data, which you can then later import back in. However, if we switch over to something like the video option, any of the settings that we've set up in the audio setup are not being applied to the video setup. They're totally independent to each other. So we can come into this one, we can click on edit columns, and you can see the export option isn't available inside you, neither is the inline editing option. Even though the options are enabled underneath, we have nothing set up to be able to use those. So each of these column sets is independent of each other. So it's a great way of to set up exactly the kinds of settings of options that you want on a specific media type basis. And you can have all manner of different media types available to you inside you and use the powerful options that Admin Collins Pro gives you. Now that's how we can really go about customizing things, but we talked about right back at the beginning, some more support for ACF fields. Now one of the things that's been added in is it's much easier now to go ahead and select any ACF field. Let me just quickly demonstrate what I'm talking about. So this is a sandbox example. You can see it's got lots of information inside here and a lot of this is advanced custom fields based fields. So let's go ahead and open up the option to edit the columns. Let's scroll down. And let's go and take a look at adding a new column. So let's add a column. You'll see now if we choose the type, we scroll up, 
all of our ACF fields are now listed and preceded by this ACF type icon. Just makes the whole process seeing exactly what field is an ACF field really, really quick and easy. Now on top of making it easier to just simply find out which are ACF fields when you go in to add your admin columns in, there's also now support for group fields and clone fields. This just makes the whole process of working with ACF inside Admin Columns Pro even easier. So hopefully what this has demonstrated is that you can now use Admin Columns Pro to do an awful lot more to create totally unique, powerful, intuitive, and actually really usable media libraries inside WordPress, alongside all of the other things you can do with it. Plus, if you're an ACF user, you now have even easier time of working with ACF fields and that expanded set of fields that you can work with inside Admin Columns Pro. Now, as always, all the applicable links are in the description. If you want to check this out for yourself with a sandbox, the link will be down there so you can quickly run one of those up and take it for a test drive. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.